Hey guys, it is Saturday, December 7th. We're at 99,600. And this episode is about looking at stocks from a Bitcoin perspective. Okay. And before I uh, dive into my content, I just want to hit, uh, remind you to hit uh, subscribe on that YouTube. Um, it's, it's free uh, and uh, it helps me get my numbers up with YouTube, which is good for me. Um, and uh, also you can also, I have a members only um, subscription on, on uh, Twitter now for a dollar a month. And feel free to subscribe to that too. So I have some extra content there. Uh, with that in mind, let's get into our content today. So what I want to talk about is how do we look at stocks and earnings per share and earnings per share growth in, uh, in, in Bitcoin terms. And I, I started this with a tweet uh, that I made uh, yesterday, and I was just sort of thinking, what do what do these g growth stocks look like in terms of uh, in terms of Bitcoin? And I d it just hit me that every company in the S and P five hundred has negative earnings per share growth measured in Bitcoin, the, except for one, really. It's MicroStrategy. That's the only company which is growing its Bitcoin per share uh, in terms of on a Bitcoin standard. Um, so what do I mean by that? Well, let's go to this chat GPT here. And uh, basically, I'm going to take a look at S&P 500 earnings per share. Well, 10 years ago, these earnings per share... Uh, was $137, right, uh, for the S&P 500. Today, we're up to $196. So we went from 137 to 197 in 10 years. Not bad. But actually, it's not that great either. It's about a 3.66% CAGR. So the earnings uh, per share of the S&P 500 are growing at, uh, let's call it 4%. It's not terrible. They pay a small dividend. So, you know, but how is Bitcoin's CAGR? Well, Bitcoin CAGR is about, historically, it's about 70%. Uh, you know, it is in the, um, in the power law model, it's about 45%, right? So... I, I would say the power law model is the best statistical model of where we are going forward. Uh, but the bottom line is we have a, uh, a growth surplus over stocks of about 40%, which means that the stocks are actually decreasing in Bitcoin uh, terms by 30 to 40% per year. And I'm just going to use that wide range there. So, if you had uh, earnings decline by 40% per year, right? How far, what is $196 of earnings discounted at 10% be worth on a discounted cash flow basis? Well, it's worth about $393. And the ratio of that to 196 is two. So what this is saying is that relative to uh, Bitcoin, the S&P should trade at a, a, a market cap of, uh, it should trade at a price to earnings of two, not price to earnings of 20. So really, it's, it's amazing that, uh, that people are valuing the S&P so highly relative to Bitcoin. And, uh, you know, a lot of people have been noticing this and, you know, uh, they, they're like, well, Fred, why would I invest in anything if there's Bitcoin? And the answer is, you probably shouldn't, right? You probably should just take your money and then just hold it in Bitcoin. Um, that's the reality, okay? Uh, now, here I have the S&P 500 um, uh, earnings over time relative to Bitcoin. You see, in 2022, the earnings per share of the S&P rose relative to Bitcoin to about one per million Satoshis, uh, one million Satoshis per, per share. And now it's down to, you know, a third of a, a Satoshi 
per, per a third of a million satoshis per share, or 0.2 uh, million satoshis per share. So this is not this is not an earnings per share a growth pattern that's really worth investing in. And I think that um, you know I think that basically what's happening here is that Bitcoin is is just better than any investment over the next 20 years right now. However, most people will not realize that it's uh, one of the best investments in the world right now. So most people are going to concentrate on suboptimal investments. Now, 20 years from now, 20, 30 years from now, Bitcoin will no longer be delivering 40% CAGR returns. It'll be delivering more like 15%, 10%, which is still amazing, right? Uh, but at that point, certain stocks will be able to really clearly outperform Bitcoin. Uh, but I do think that for the, for the, for the foreseeable future, you're not going to find a better investment than Bitcoin. Now, we can get into portfolio sizing with Kelly criteria and a bunch of other stuff. That's a subject for another, another era. But I just wanted to point out that MSTR is really unique in that it accrues Bitcoin right now uh, per share. And I would sort of say... If you're a Bitcoin investor, you really want to get things that that'll get you more Bitcoin. If you're going to invest your Bitcoin, you really want to get more Bitcoin later. Otherwise, you should just hold on to your Bitcoin because it's already going to appreciate relative to fiat by 40% per year and relative to the purchasing power, whatever, by 35% per year. So it, it, it really is an amazing investment. So that's my... Sorry, it's a little bit long-winded, but that's my content for today. Hope you liked it. And again, please hit the subscribe button. Check out my new uh, subscription um, area on uh, Twitter, on Dot Kruger. It's only a dollar a month. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm going to try to respond more to people's questions and stuff there because, uh, you know, I have 100 subscribers. It's kind of fun. I don't need the money, obviously, but... Um, it's kind of fun. I want to see if I can grow my little subscriber base. So I will see you guys later.